أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وخاتم النبيين ورحمة الله للعالمين سيدنا وحبيبنا وعزيزنا محمد صلى الله على محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطاهرين وعلى معيته من الأنصار والمهاجرين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Dear brothers, dear sisters عن الصراط المستقيم السلام عليكم ورحمة رب العالمين الحمد لله that Allah has brought us together this week to assimilate into the meanings of his guidance as expressed in the straightforward and penetrating ayat of the Qur'an al-Majid. We will carry on bi-ithnillah and pick up from where we left off the last time. Uh, the last time we were at ayah 78 and 79 from Surah Al-Ma'idah in which Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says Ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Lu'ina al-lazina kafaru min bani Israel ala lisani Dawood wa Isa ibn Maryam ذلك بما عصوا وكانوا يعتدون كانوا لا يتناهون عن منكر فعلوه لبئس ما كانوا يفعلون <coughs> To recap Allah جل وعلا is saying that those who are in denial of Allah's present power and abundant authority, those who are in denial of Allah's immediate presence in human affairs and in human life from among the children of Bani Israel are condemned and they are cursed. I want to underline, and I've, I've said this, but I have to say it again because the realities of life are playing havoc with, our, with the Muslims' inattention absent-mindedness of the fact concerning the wording of this ayah. It is الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ Banu Israel per se, the children of Israel per se, are not condemned. It is only those from among the children of Israel who reject who do not consider Allah to be an immediate authority and a propelling power in, in life itself, in society, in their psychology, in their behavior. These are the ones that Allah has cursed and condemned. لُعِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ على لسان داوود وعيسى بن مريم by the vocalization of 
prophet Dawood, David, and Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus, the son of Mary. Why did these prominent prophets of Allah curse and condemn the God deniers of Bani Israel? The ayah tells us, ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَصَوْ وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ that condemnation is due to the disobedience and the aggression that is generated by these God deniers. The disobedience of Allah and an aggressive attitude towards Allah and towards humanity. ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَصَوْ وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ they were in the habit of never being systematic in confronting a munkar that they were guilty of. We said, the wording of this ayah is not كَانُوا لَا يَنْهَوْنَ عَنْ مُنْكَرٍ فَعَلُوا كَانُوا لَا يَتَنَاهَوْنَ عَنْ مُنْكَرٍ فَعَلُوا The construct of the verb يَتَنَاهَوْنَ means that they were not one mind and one heart and one willpower and one act in opposing the munkar that they themselves have committed. كَانُوا there was not this self-generated collective character of theirs that took issue with the munkar. They did not have that. And for that reason, they were condemned by the prophets of Allah. Vile indeed is their act, whatever they were committing of such disobedience and aggression vis-a-vis -vis divinity and vis-a-vis -vis humanity. And then the ayah number 80, and here is where we take off uh, from... Uh, last week, <clears> Tara. <throat> well, be, before we get to a, a, a number a, a eighty, this condemnation that was due to them by Allah's selected prophets, it manifested itself in such a way that they became uh, an exclusion to the rest of humanity, a negative, uh, deformative exclusion to the rest of humanity. There are ayat in the Qur'an that tell us that they were reduced in their humanity to the status of beasts. In other words, physically they appear to be human just like you and me, but the, the ayat in the Quran said that they were musikhu, which means, you see, in today's secular uh, scripture and prophet absent world, uh, they speak about um, the development of life from being originally a cell and then becoming the cell turning into an amphibious form of life and then the amphibious form of life transitioning into the animal kingdom apes, chimpanzees, monkeys, whatever, and then those forms of animals transitioning and becoming humans. 
we there's no um, concrete proof of that, even though it can be argued one way or the other, and that's not what we are uh, in the course of doing right now. But the the ayah in the Quran that speaks about the dehumanization of these characters, the kafaru min bani Israel. It's in the opposite direction, humans deteriorating and reaching the level of apes and pigs. Now, I'm not going to say uh, which it has been said and it has been explained that that actually physically happened. I don't know if it actually physically happened. Uh, but certainly, if there is a scientific argument that says life can go from an amoeba, from a very small form of cellular life, and then progress from there and there and there and be, uh, until finally uh, we become humans, then the opposite can hold true. The humans can digress can digress, can be reduced from their humanity into uh, apes and pigs. Now, it's very interesting here that um, even those who are uh, scripturally absent from life, uh, those who strictly live in scientific communities are beginning to transplant some of the organs that belong to pigs in human beings. So there's some type of connection there uh, to be further understood as the research and the discoveries in the future may prove. Um, and as far as monkeys or chimpanzees or uh, apes and these types of uh, creatures or animals, uh, they display a form of uh, knowledge. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that if we are in just like the Alladina Kafaru min Bani Israel. If they are in denial of Allah, their push in that denial of Allah can have a ricochet effect upon them in which they will be reduced. And instead of having a conscious and an intellect in charge of their behavior they will have an instinct and uh, an emotion in charge of their behavior in the negative sense of the word to a degree that they resemble two types of creatures, al-qirada wal khanazir. This is, these are Quranic ayat, these are Quranic words, these are Quranic meanings. So here, <coughs> For those uh, who want a little more information on this, in the history of Ladina Kafaru from the children of Bani Israel, there was the issue of a Sabbath, a Sabbath. This is mentioned in, in Ayat in the Quran. And because they were in violation of the Sabbath, systematic, deliberate, thought out, intended violation of the Sabbath, they were reduced to qirada, apes. Whether that reduction was a physical one or whether it was a psychological one, this is where there's room to go both ways, uh, either way or even both ways. And then uh, al-khanazir, being transformed into hogs or pigs is when, you know, uh, 
they requested from Isa ibn Maryam to have a table spread. And the ayah in the Quran says, Takunu lana eidan li awalina wa akhirina wa ayata mink. This table spread as a a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be a cause for celebration for we the pioneers and whoever comes in the last part of our history and a demonstration of Allah's power. And we saw how they took issue with Isa ibn Maryam and took issue with Allah there and therefore uh, they were reduced from humanity to bestiality. <clears throat> so we go on, and the, the wording, لَبِئْسَ مَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ Vile indeed, لَبِئْسَ has uh, a, an emphatic meaning uh, in the construct of the word, it's by, it's like saying by Allah, vile indeed is what they were want to do. And then we now we go on picking up again. Tara kathira minhum yatawallona ladina kafaru. You will see many of them. See once again we encounter the word kathira. And this word qualifies the um, quality and the quantity of Bani Israel who have gone off course in their disobedience and in their aggression vis-a-vis -vis the ultimate authority and power of Allah. Jalla Jalalu Tara Kathiran Minhum Yetawalona Levina Kafaru. You will see many of them allying themselves with those who are in denial of Allah's power and authority. They were given clear instructions and they were given clear guidance from Allah through the agency of dozens, if not hundreds, of prophets throughout history and throughout time. And still, when it comes to worldly affairs, forget about for a moment, forget about their theology. They could be as religious and as pious as people are in their places of worship, in synagogues, in temples, etc. But when they step out and they have to deal with the real issues of life, then they become allies and bosom buddies of those who reject Allah's authority and power. As if there is no distinction the distinction remains strictly a theological distinction, but in the thick and thin of life, you will see them, the ayah is telling us, Tara kathira minhum yatawallona ladina kafaru. They become uh, supporters, uh, they become uh, counterparts of Alladina Kafaru. Allah, remember, Allah says, Kathiram minhum, which means not all of them. And this is where today's general Muslim public mind is not paying attention to Allah's guidance. In today's world, just look out, open, open up, look at reality, and you see those, some of those in the Muslim world who are in positions of decision-making, the governors, the kings, the presidents, the officials, they 
are trying to convince now the general Muslim public that all of Bani Israel as represented in the Zionist, racist, apartheid, nation state of Israel, these are friends, all of them. There's no exception to the rule here. On the other hand, you will find some Muslims who are in the religious spectrum of Islam who want to brush all of the Israeli types, the Jews, with the broad brush of being the enemies of Allah. And no one is paying attention to these ayat where it's saying, you're wrong, not all of Bani Israel are angels, and you also are wrong, not all of Bani Israel are devils. We should relocate our thinking. Okay, if we understand this ayah, Tara kathira minhum yatawallawna alladhina kafaru. Most or many of Bani Israel have become allies of alladhina kafaru. The mushrikeen, al-zalimeen, all of these manifestations of denying Allah's power and authority are translated into oppression, are translated into institutionalized objection to Allah. تَرَى كَثِيرًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتَوَلَّوْنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَبِئْسَ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لَهُمْ أَيْدِيهِمْ So if we, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us many of them, who are these many? Have we given it a thought? Have we tried to go and uh, do some uh, lesson work on who are these many? who have become the political, the ideological, and the military allies of Allah's avowed enemies? Who are they? We're not talking about theologically speaking. Theologically speaking, the, the Israelis are in one theological camp, and al-Ladhina kafaru, with the variety of Ladhina kafaru in this world, are in another camp, theologically. But when it comes to militarily, when it comes to um, politically, when it comes to administratively, when it, these other issues, you almost cannot distinguish between them. They become bosom buddies. تَرَى كَثِيرًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتَوَلَّوْنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا so understanding this ayah would force us to sort them out. Can't lump them all together one way or the other. This is, this is the gray area that has been manipulated by the common enemies of the Muslims. And the Muslims seem to go into extremes in trying to understand reality in light of what the Qur'an is explaining to us. لَبِئْسَ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لَهُمْ أَنفُسُهُمْ What a terrible thing that, they're, that they themselves, the الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ that they have offered themselves. That Allah has condemned them. Allah has turned angry against them. And in suffering shall they abide. 
they themselves cannot understand why they are suffering. Many of these who claim to belong to the context of Bani Israel, they cannot come to grips with the fact that psychologically they are suffering in this world. And Allah is showing them, explaining to us, and by explaining to us, explaining to the rest of humanity, because this Qur'an is an open book. This is not something that we are hiding, hiding in the masajid, or we are discussing in closed circles. No, this is an open book. The reason that they, these Ladina kafaru, min bani Israel, the reason that they are suffering psychologically is because what they, it's the result of what they have done to their own selves. And then we make a, a small transition here to from speaking about the meanings of these ayat in the Quran to speak about, okay, let, let, let's look at today's world. What's happening in today's world? Allah is telling us in these ayat, Tara kathira minhum yatawallawna alladhina kafar. You will see many of these alladhina kafaru min bani Israel who have become allies of alladhina kafaru. Is there any doubt in anyone's mind that there is a deadly and a um, potentially uh, worldwide combined effort between Zionism and imperialism? All the countries in the world that meet the definition of imperialist countries have a very comfortable relationship with the Zionists who meet the definition of Alladina Kafaru Mimbani Israel. The Zionists have a very cozy relationship with the racists in the world. Whether you look at these racists in India, or you look at these racists in Europe, or in America, or wherever, still you will find that they have a tight relationship. Tara kathira minhum yatawallawna alladhina kafaru. Now we move to an area that is a little sensitive because the word kufr has been hijacked by uh, intelligence agencies and by the combined powers of Zio imperialism and has been used to recruit many Muslims who began, who years ago, a decade or more ago, who began to describe other Muslims and define them as kafirs. Instead of uh, tightening this definition and applying it where it belongs, they began to generalize uh, the definition of kufr and say that all the Muslims of the world, if they don't agree with them, by the way, this is the indoctrination of the Saudi Arabian government uh, that has spent tons of money on educational institutions and masajid all around the world during the 1970s, 80s, 90s, and the first 20 years of the 21st century on the Gregorian calendar, or 
uh, the first 40 plus years on the Hijri calendar of the 15th century, which means from 1400 onwards. We're in the year 1443. So they've been spending all of this money to convince their types that if other Muslims in the world do not agree with them, they are kafirs. All the Muslims in the world have become kafirs, and therefore it is halal to shed their blood. A note here is um, there was a scholar who was invited to Algeria from the Gulf area, uh, the Persian Arabian Gulf. And by the way, this even uh, 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 the name of this Gulf has become a contention uh, between those who speak Arabic and those who speak Persian. And uh, I say to those who have the nationalist, nationalist pulse in them, you are not going to mature Islamically if you are an Arabic-speaking person. You will not mature Islamically until you say that body of water is called the Persian Gulf. And those of you who speak Persian, you will not mature Islamically until you call that same body of water the Arabian Gulf. As long as you are caught up in your nationalism, um, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves you from uh, the consequences of that. Anyways, now we see that there is there are visits that are going on between الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ that these ayat have been talking about and officials in uh, Arabian countries. The Prime Minister of the الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ just went to Bahrain uh, this week and it is also said that the crown prince of Bahrain in the near future is going to reciprocate the visit and go to Al-Ladina Kafaru Min Bani Israel in the colonized holy land of Palestine. Uh, and now there's also a an officer a high-ranking naval officer from Al-Ladina Kafaru Min Bani Israel who is going to be stationed in Bahrain. In the past months, permission has been given for the um, uh, aircrafts uh, taking off from colonized Palestine flown by الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ over the Arabian Peninsula. They, right now the skies are the limits for الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ over Arabia. Anyways, I, I want to go back to what I said. There was a scholar, an academic, who was invited from the Gulf to go to Algeria. He was received at the airport by a high-ranking military official. The high-ranking military official said, I want to have a chat with you. So he had, they had a little chat there, and uh, it turned out that the high-ranking Algerian military official knew more about Islam and quote-unquote radical Islam than the scholar and, and the, the Islamic scholar and academic. And this Islamic scholar and academic was surprised. It seems like you know uh, about Islamic affairs as much as I do, or even more. He said, yes. And you know why that is the case? Because we've been, in the military here in Algeria, we've been sent to Saudi Arabia uh, on uh, a mission to study Islam. 
and we were taught basically to understand the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet to mean that it is permissible for us to kill other Muslims. And it's only not us from Algeria. There were other delegations, military delegations from different Arab countries, such as Egypt and Syria and etc. He named a few countries. And they all, what were they doing in that uh, God-forsaken kingdom of the tribe of Saud? Uh, they were studying and being convinced that the militaries in these Muslim countries can be used and should be used to kill any uh, Muslims who understand their Islam to mean independence and self-determination. Uh, the, the lack of understanding of this Qur'an has given us the likes of, there's a person who's been, who has an Islamic background now. We're not speaking about ritualistic or traditional Muslims. We're speaking about individuals who come from Islamic movements. This person has become a member of the Knesset in Israel, Abbas Mansour, and he refuses to call Israel an apartheid state. And he even went to the extent of agreeing with Al-Ladina Kafaru min Bani Israel, who are his superiors in Tel Aviv, he agreed with them to keep another Islamic another Palestinian Islamic person from leaving the country. There's a famous Islamic Palestinian person who's been in prison in and out many times. His name is, name is Ra'id Salah. So Ra'id Salah now, who belongs to with an Islamic background, he has an Islamic history of struggle against الذين كفروا من بني Israel. And then we have Abbas Mansour, who comes from the same type of Islamic background. And look how they are at odds with each other. What does this say about us and our understanding of what Allah is telling us? And we've noticed We've explained how الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي Israel annulled their agreements with Allah. How are they going? Do we expect them to honor their agreements with us when they annul their agreements with Allah? We have much to learn from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet. May Allah help us. May Allah guide us. May Allah accept from us and accept us and until we meet inshallah next week wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh